Well, hi there. This is your buddy Dave over at Mars X3D, and we're going to jump right into it. You know, Neville Thompson's PDS of Sol 1434 is loaded with all kinds of artifacts, but we've selected one today because it has something interesting down in the lower left corner. Okay, what does that look like to you? I know it's pareidolia, but to me, it looks like a spent shell or warhead lying in the sand. See the rings on the nose section? Those are not the result of a photographic artifact, but are actually part of whatever it is. The overall cylindrical shape and the presence of what may be worn off stabilization fins seem quite a stretch for this to be a natural object. So is it actually ordnance? Probably not. That's what pareidolia is all about, isn't it? Our tendency to assign visual meaning to things we don't understand, but there is something that bugs me. You see, the mathematical dictates of design engineering mean that regardless of the originating intelligence, certain goals and certain solutions to those goals will inevitably manifest the same way. So we can shout pareidolia all we want. That doesn't change the math. You know what pops out in this one? Those four blocks in the lower right-hand corner. They need a closer look. Now come on. Those two blocks are blatantly unnatural. Look at that bluish stone on the left. Are those carvings, stylized writing, or just another amazing bit of erosion? They seem to resemble the rounded letters of Taiwanese to my eye, but regardless, it hardly seems natural to me. Look at the one right next to it. Symmetrical radius slabs form a perfect right angle, as if they were once a corner piece in a building. More wind and sand forming perfect angles? Please explain. I'm waiting. Right behind the blocks, we see a trough-like stone, rounded at one end with two interesting items lying in front. It's hard to tell if they're part of the trough, but the violin-shaped piece is not only pretty complex in its bilateral symmetry, but look at those two bumps or rivets that are in line, identical in size, and centered on the upper portion. What's that all about? To the left of the violin lies what looks a lot like a carpenter's square partially buried in the sand. More magic by random winds? The real eyeball stopper in this one, however, is the rectangular block just behind the trough. If that first marking were an E, it'd be an exit sign. What are clearly letters or symbols are evenly carved and distributed on the face of the block. Come on now, when are you gonna break down and call a duck a duck when you see it? You know, I'm not sure what to make of this one. How about that flawlessly rectangular piece on the lower left and the impeccable building blocks at the top? Why not take a closer look? This almost looks like a computer display, doesn't it? With its dark inner surface and its perfectly even shell. And logically, that's not at all likely to be the case. As we all know, a PC or any electronic component would soon just turn into dust in the wind-driven sand up there on Mars, but whatever it is, it was clearly manufactured. Note also the polyhedral block in front of it and the many smaller structural blocks throughout the frame. Look at all those structural blocks just scattered around. Right angles are everywhere, and take a good look at the bluish stone just right of center at the bottom. There's no question that it has ornamental carving on its visible surface, along with its right angles. You know, the massive destruction that overtook Martian civilization left no stone upon another for the most part. We do find the occasional wall and, of course, pyramids by the score, but when you consider the massive weight of most of the building components we find, it's clear that overwhelming hydrologic forces were in play as oceans sloshed about before boiling off into the stripped atmosphere. According to Dr. John Brandenburg, this all came about as a result of a nuclear attack, the size of which is almost beyond comprehension. Okay, this context view includes the trap door, a classic anomaly seen directly under the target circle, but 
What is that lying in the sand above and behind this classic anomaly? That looks like a tool, doesn't it? Maybe two or three feet long. It's kind of like the T-square many of us have in our workshops. See how the long bar has evenly spaced increments engraved on it? That leaves the impression with me that the rectangular plate with the semicircular end and the hole in the center is made to slide up and down, locking into each increment according to need. It looks like the upper end curves back towards the bar, but that may be just an illusion of light and shadow. The three evenly spaced plates perpendicular to the bar are of uniform thickness. They have right angles and holes, and they certainly seem to be an integral part of whatever this is. Given the proximity of the trap door, perhaps this was part of the locking mechanism, or possibly a tool used in conjunction with whatever purpose the door served. The desire to just walk over there and pick it up and give it a thorough going over is almost irresistible, unless, of course, you're from NASA. Okay, let's wrap things up with two classic anomalies that have been covered in depth by myself and other anomalists in the past. The difference here being these views are the first time 3D rendering has been applied. This context view is absolutely loaded with strangeness, but we're going to focus on the two main attractions for now. I'm choosing to call this a paver due to its resemblance to paving stones of various thicknesses and shapes that we utilize for patios and walkways, streets, and so forth. Its sharply triangular shape is arresting in its perfection. Its depth and thickness also suggests that this was intended for load-bearing purposes, perhaps a heavily traveled road. Think of the Appian Way in Rome, where Roman engineers installed overly thick pavers, not because semis or heavy equipment were rolling over it daily, but because they intended their highway to last forever. Indeed, it's still in use, daily use, even thousands of years after its construction. Of course, the Romans didn't have to deal with a global catastrophe as Mars did, just hordes of Goths who found the Romans' well-built roads advantageous to their invasion plans. This one is a real classic. This huge slab of stone bears a beautiful bas-relief cliff in its center so clear and precise as to render meaningless the mewling protests of naysayers. <laughs> Try saying that three times. What is truly fascinating, however, is the way the substrate bends up and back as if it were made of metal. Perhaps the titanic forces that ripped this facade element from the building it graced bent the metal backing. That's just speculation, of course, but how does one explain what we see here? Before leaving this view, take a good look at the triangular piece in the upper left-hand corner. It's uniform in thickness, comprised of several layers, and it seems to be made of corroded metal. The entire gigapan will keep the serious anomalous busy for hours. Hey, thanks for stopping by and having a look today. There is a whole lot more to come. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing. And in the meantime, this is your buddy Dave over at Mars X3D. Be well. <laughs>